memories of the King's death. Uh, I was a 14 year old schoolboy and I was a prefect at South Milton School. On that particular morning I was called to the headmaster's office uh, thinking I'd probably done something wrong. But uh, he called me in and he said, Michael I've got some sad news uh, for you and I want you to go around to each classroom and tell each member of staff that the King has died. Uh, so I went ahead and done that and uh, I thought uh, I'd done it quite well although i am usually got a smile on my face I had to compose myself to look serious at the time because uh, it was such a serious thing to have happened I can remember going around in the, uh, the, each, the teacher in each classroom uh, I called him out into the corridor because uh, I didn't want to announce it to the full class uh, and I told him and uh, he said thank you very much and he went in and probably had a minute silence, I don't know, but then I succeeded to the next, proceeded to the next class and so on. That is my bit I can remember particularly about the Queen, the King's, the King's death. Now the next thing I remember is Coronation Day in uh, 1953. Uh, we were holding a party at the village hall at Philly where I lived and we were playing around and we had a tug of war. Now, there was five of us in my team and ten in the other. And as it was such a crowd around, nobody knew what we were doing, we tied the rope to a gatepost. So the ten people couldn't budge us. <laughs> they could not make it out. But that was very funny. Uh, that is about all I can remember about that, those particular incidents. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic, thank you. And um, what about, um, do you have any memories of the Queen's Theatre? Is that, is that, have you got anything to the share, actually, share I, about that? I did go to the Queen's Theatre to a few, a few of the musical comedy uh, things at a time. And uh, I remember going there with my wife, left the car outside and left the lights on. When I came out I got a flat battery. <laughs> I can remember that's the last time we went. Yeah. But other than the Queen's Theatre, I did go once to the uh, Harvest Festival service a couple of years ago. Because um, uh, the charity, part of the proceeds went to Headway, which is a charity that I support. Okay, thank you. Do you want to share the wartime memories? Because you said you've No, my wartime, wartime memories, uh, I, I think I must have probably around about three. And my father, who died that same year, uh, and his neighbour was out sawing logs up with the old cross-cut saw and they were looking at, up into the sky and they there was a dogfight up there see, that one there's ours and that there's a German one and I can remember that then a little bit later in the war I can remember seeing the searchlights and hearing the guns in the distance and seeing the sky lit up which was probably over Exeter or Plymouth the sky was a light and that's that particular time I can remember. Another time a bomb had dropped somewhere in the area and we went up and saw the damage in the field like kids would do. And uh, I can remember taking my gas mask to school and having to test that every day. I had to go through the procedure to, and I hated it. So did the rest of the kids. <laughs> yes. How's that? Anything else you want? Were there, were there any... Um evacuees that came down to Oh yes, there were loads of evacuees. Uh, we were very friendly with them. And I, I still remember their birthdays and their names. And I thought about uh, one day trying to trace them and I thought, well, they may even be dead now with the same age means probably older. But there was quite a few in the village where I lived, yeah. So you got on, you got on okay with them? There wasn't any sort of... Oh, we got on fine with them. We played with them, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's great. And they were, all, they were all in the same classes with you at school? Well, yes, because right? we were in the primary school, mm -hmm. see, at uh, West Butler, where I lived. And uh, obviously there has been a shortage of teachers. And our teacher was somewhere, somewhere in the mid in her 80s. So, we, to be honest, we didn't learn a lot. But I did learn to read and write. <laughs> the rest of the time we were doing uh, playing with the raffia and things like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a good... So, so um, just while while we're here, we're talking. It'd be nice to talk maybe a little bit about so the years the years after the war, and and just you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in you 
reflecting on how you've seen things change or particular incidents that you remember that, that, that really sort of come to mind in terms of... I can remember uh, the Queen's wedding. She wanted the Queen, she was Princess Elizabeth, and I remember people listening to the radio about the wedding, her wedding to Prince Philip, as he was then. I can vaguely remember that, but I must, I must have been 10, something like that, 10 year old, probably. Because there was no television, so we didn't even have a radio. If we wanted to listen, you know, we had to go somewhere else, we got a radio if we wanted to hear anything. We never could never afford a daily paper. All my mum could afford was the North Devon Journal Herald, which she sent to India to a, a friend of ours who was serving in the forces in India. She sent a journal every week, which was free, you were free to send it. You didn't have to pay, you know, in those days for that particular. And later on, I can't remember much about it, but later on, because we moved, we moved down to Philly when I was 11, in 1948. Hence, that's why I went to South Melbourne School, and the story of the King's death, mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. What, yeah. a, what about, um, so obviously you, you, you'd have, um, as a child, did you come into Barnstable much? Was that sort of something? That no. Uh, we used to walk to Philly Station and go on the train to Barnstable uh-huh. uh, to mum to do a little bit of shopping occasionally. Then they ran a bus service uh, once a week to go to Barnstable. And uh, I used to hit riding on that bus. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> so how have you seen Barnstable change? What, 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 oh, what Barnstable's changed a terrific lot, hasn't it? I mean, even in recent years, mm-hmm. you know... Uh, but I can't remember a lot about Barnstable, not really. I remember somebody take us into Barnstable Fair and parked his cars in one of the garages and he couldn't get it out because it was late coming back. But I don't know how he got it out, but he did because he got us home all right. <laughs> what about the village itself? What about... Oh, West Buckland, Buckland. West Buckland itself has changed considerably. Mm-hmm. Uh, what used to be, we used to call the playing field, where the you know, kids could go out and play, there's, there's no housing state. And the village hall has been rebuilt, of course. And I can tell you this little snippet. Uh, I have some photographs up there, uh, an exhibition of photographs. And I went, me and my wife went up there to have a look at the photos. Uh, and there was one there of my grandfather shoeing a horse. Now, the kind lady that ran the uh, exhibition, she said, I've got a photo of that. An extra one at home already in the frame for you. You can have that. So I've got it at home. And there's a picture of my grandfather, he was a blacksmith, chewing a horse, and my uncle stood beside him. And all the village people stood up down through because the photograph was being taken. And in those days, I mean, it must have been the 1920s, probably earlier, uh, because there was a photo being took, everybody, all the villagers were out, stood up along the hedge, you know, in the, photo, in the picture, you know. <laughs> That's super. Do you remember your grandfather at all? No, no, no. no. Okay. I only just remember my father because mm-hmm. I was three when he died. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I suppose. Uh, what I mean, one of the things that I'm interested in is is how you've seen. Um, the, how, would you say that the, the the people of the of this place, the people of uh, you know the village or Barnstable, have changed? Would you say that they're they're basically the same, the same mixture of people as they were in the past. Uh, I mean, obviously, buildings and and well, there's, work, there's people change, from away have moved in now mm-hmm. in the village of West Butlin. I think there's probably only one family or two families I know there at the moment. One was there when I was a child, and the other one was a lecturer at the college that I knew very well. He's moved to West Butlin, but there is nobody else that I know. Uh, I don't even know if there's any descendants of the uh, people that were there. There probably is one or two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I really remember the playing field. They were playing cricket there. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. And, and that, another thing, I don't know if this makes a difference. During the war, uh, I can remember being in that playing field. And there was a lot of aircraft towing gliders going across. Now, nobody can confirm where they came from or where they were going. I can only think it must have been D-Day. But the sky was full of them. And I've tried to get people to say, well, where would they come from? Nobody seems to know. Uh, and I, it wasn't a figment of my imagination because I, 
I can remember seeing it. The sky was full of the aircraft towing gliders. Was it? Was it? Was it? F uh, was there a sense of you or other people around you being very frightened in the war, or did that kind of pass no, your mind? Because, no, being you know, a child, you see, yeah. you didn't uh, realise the seriousness of it. Mm. You know, uh, you know, you didn't. Being a kid, mm. <laughs> yeah. And um, have you got brothers and sisters? You got? Oh any? yes, yeah. I got older brothers and sisters. What was what was what was their experience of the war? Do you, do you, do you know, or through that time? My brother was working on a farm. I can remember my sister married to a farmer, and they used to cycle from they didn't the other side of Barcelona up to see mother, because the petrol was so scarce, you know. And uh, as was my sister, why you saying that? But occasionally they could get a, take a car, but not very often. You know, they used to cycle all the way up. Blimey. Yeah, that's yeah. a long, long way. And my brother, he worked on the farm, and he lived in the farm like people did, you know. Yes. That's fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. No, I think that that's. I really like that story about you having to go around the school and yes, uh, and tell, that's tell the one that's in the paper. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, okay, that that's nice. I think that gives us that gives us quite a nice sort of introduction to the, the you know what people's experiences yes. were in terms yes. of that. So we'll probably I think we'll definitely use that one. I'm trying to think about Barnstable, but I can't remember. I remember coming into Barnstable on the bus. Mm -hmm. That's about all. But I hated it. I Why did you hate it so much? I don't know. I just hated that bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For some reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, as you know, yeah. people like any other reason. Sometimes we take against something for yes, whatever reason. Yes. And, yeah. I couldn't wait to get out of the thing. <laughs> Poor <laughs> mum had to drag me. <laughs> oh yeah. See that. Well, that's fantastic, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Shall I turn these yeah, pieces off? Yeah, you should be able to find something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Remember the American soldiers in their in their vehicles driving through the village. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and and people people sort of stopping and staring and yes, looking yes. at that going on. Yeah. Yeah. We used to go to my auntie's place, which is at Widmouth. It's near um, Watermouth Castle, and they had a private beach. All the ladies who worked for it, we were allowed to go down and swim. We loved that, and all of a sudden one day we were stopped because they were mining it, and we could see them pit, walking along pitting the mines down, and we had to stop. Yeah, well, that's one thing other than I can that's remember very... you say, yes. We couldn't do the most swimming there, we had to come, we had to stop. We used to love it, because the summer seemed to be endless. You know, you could go down there ages and mess around in the water, and it was lovely, mm. until they come and mind it. Oh. <laughs>